If you're a parent, meaning you have children, chances are good in this day and age they're going to or have suffered some level of anxiety. Let's talk about how to deal with that. Some of the best ways. Stick around. So this is huge. This is one of those topics we knew we were going to talk about eventually as parents because it's on the mind and in the hearts of so many parents everywhere. But I mean, at least in our own experience in North America, it's, it's epidemic, really. You know, anxiety, it's such a, a buzzword. I don't know that it's, it's necessarily, and you could weigh in on this, if it's necessarily any more more pronounced than it was in previous generations, maybe it's just being diagnosed more, maybe it's being talked about more, but raising children with at least clinically diagnosed anxiety is something that we have had some experience with. Well, I think it's a lot more, I don't know, it seems more prevalent to me. It seems like... I think, it, I think statistically it, it is. I mean, I, I was just kind of saying that, but I and mean... And maybe it's because people are more aware of it, they discuss it more, but I think anxiety, depression, teen suicide is up. Oh, I mean, definitely there's a all of lot those. of yeah. issues. And I think just having that open dialogue with your children about, I mean, we've had mental health issues in our family that we've been dealing with for years. I mean, one of our children, we started therapy in fifth grade. And I mean, I remember talking to the doctor before then, like something's wrong. No child should scream this much when I leave and stuff. So it started separation out with separation anxiety. anxiety. But we have kids with general anxiety disorder, social anxiety. And they, and, you know, and they develop them at different ages and in different stages of their life, which is why some of them seem more pronounced and more clinically diagnosable than others. Because sometimes you might be tempted to just go, oh, I felt that when I was your age. Oh, it's nothing to worry about. You're just afraid of going to this activity or you're afraid of speaking in public or whatever. Of course, none of our children are afraid of anything in public. But I think the key is listening to your child and validating them so that they can tell you other things. You know, if they're having thoughts of suicide, if they're, that they can come to you and you can get them the help that they need. Right. And, and key to that is it's, it, it happens before, right? I mean, it's the idea that you're, you're building this relationship of trust so that they do feel like they can talk to you about anything. And if you, one way to quickly shut that down or to, to hamper its development at all is when they do feel like they tell you something to not react or overreact too judgmentally oh, or right. too traditional parent, you did what? You said what? You're thinking what? You're having feelings of what? I mean, you know, that is the well, natural instinct like, is to knee jerk. I've you know. had thoughts of suicide. You what? You can't think about that. You need to say, instead of saying, okay, what's well, going yeah, on? What's happened? What's... Where did it come from? Right. We were just reading recently uh, something, a report that was talking about how you're, you're, it's actually a myth if you think that by talking about, specifically about something like suicide with a teen, that you're going to make them want to do it more. Like you're introducing this idea and somehow validating it rather than the opposite is true, which is, oh, you're willing mom to talk about this with me? To listen. And, and to listen. And that level of communication is what will help me with this rather than, yeah, you know, I can't talk can about it. you help or whatever. But I mean, for me, I definitely believe that medication has its purpose. I mean, to me, if you have high blood pressure or heart disease, you're going to take a medicine. You're going to get medication. I think we've been blessed with medication for mental issues too, and there's no stigma or anything that right. should exist when that. And and I think maybe what we're talking to is someone from my mindset and my generation. In, in turn, I know we're from the same generation, but I mean, you know, historically, I look back at my life when I was a teen, and I recognize within my own children every little thing that they stress about, that they have anxiety for, or even obsessive behaviors. I recognize that I was that way when I was young and I didn't have therapy and I didn't have medication and somehow I survived. Well, good for me. But in this generation and some of the things that have been compounded, some of the factors that over time are more dramatic to them, they're more in their face. The, the stimuli that our children today are facing 
are a completely different right. set of stimuli than when we were that age. And so their brains are trying to process things that we think we can relate to. And I've learned this on, from myself. You know, one of the things that my kids say that they have trouble with me is, is that I claim that I can relate to them on things and they don't believe that I actually can. Well, I think they want it to be their personal thing and not, don't compare me to you. Yeah. I'm trying to talk about my issue and you're saying, well, I've had that too. You know, you just yeah. want to be heard and not be compared. And I think just listening helps a lot, but getting them the help they need. I mean, we've used psychiatrists for a number of years yeah. and different medications and, you know, we have different mental health issues, some more severe than others. And that's okay. We're going to help them get through it. Speak of the devil. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> One of our sons just arrived. He just got home from school and, uh, you know, we'll probably have one of these really happy... No, I'm kidding. He's not... We... we when she talks about, uh, you know, children that have issues, she's specifically talking about John. <laughs> he's just off camera. That's not true. But it is in some way. But it's not. But it is. But it isn't. But he's the one who does turn in his phone at 10 o'clock at He night. is the one. That was on another video we talked about of taking... Uh, taking control of and thus helping our children be protected from harm. The other thing too is, is as mentioned, you know, with medical and professional help, you know, recognize that there are also peers, there are neighbors and friends. You know, if you, if you kind of broaden your, your circle of influence, and I'm not saying that you spread all of your family secrets around, but you know, the more that you get out and, and get to know more people, the more that you watch videos like these and you hear that you're not alone, you realize you're part of a community of people who I've been surprised sometimes when I've heard of others who go, oh, I have a child who has the exact same thing. Or I've dealt with teenagers who have also d dealt with those issues of anxiety and stress. There's strength in numbers. Yeah, and especially on the mom side. I mean, I always have friends talking about that or asking questions because they know I've dealt with Or it referring us to right. a specific specialist or, to, or they talk about the certain dosage of a certain amount of, or you're using so-and-so. Don't use that drug. Try this one instead. And I know a lot of people, especially outside of North America, think that we've over-drugged our children and they're all, they're all just fine. Let them be. Well, we've done natural stuff too. Right we now still we're do doing natural. amino acids. Amino acids. And it it's appears to be working. doing very well with some of our... Yeah, yeah. so... And, and again, I think when we make it sound like every single one of our kids or everyone has issues, there's some truth to that. I mean, we all have some issue of varying degrees and impact. And the idea is... To have a happy family where that exists, as we've mentioned before, love the living crap out of them no matter what they are. Communicate openly and you'll find that there's a greater, a warmer reception to your help and possibly a warmer reception to your suggestion that they do receive medication or therapy or whatever it may be because some of these things might last a lifetime. Well, thanks again for joining us. Uh, it's been great having my wife along for the last few uh, weeks here, and hopefully you've enjoyed her presence. I know I have, and hopefully she'll come back again and again and again. But leave some comments, suggestions, feedback, and uh, please like and subscribe to our little channel. Thanks so much.